Jensen over here. I just wanted to take a minute to answer some of your guys' burning questions about the Dixie Mafia. Um, one of the most questions I get the most often is where did the Dixie Mafia come from? Where did it originate? And I study like a maniac. And so far, my study has led me to a place called Phoenix City, Alabama. Now it's spelled different than Phoenix City, Arizona. There's no O. So I, I made sure and put that in my book, uh, The Dawn of the Dixie Mafia. Yes, I did not spell it correctly. It's not spelled the way we're normally used to. Um, I didn't forget an O. It's not supposed to be in there. So, but anyways, from what I can tell back before we are used to the state, we're used to the Dixie Mafia, kind of a precursor to that was the state line mob. The precursor to the state line mob was Phoenix City. Now, Phoenix City is where uh, you have a really, it's a really sad tale, but then it's also, it's also one of those things where it's a refreshing tale because you can see how bad it got um, to the point that martial law was declared and then how they could come back and, and become something afterwards. So it's kind of a tale of tragedy and redemption. So it, it's a really interesting story for those of you that are kind of history buffs like me, you, uh, you might be interested in studying. I have two or three books I'm going to recommend at the end of this video that weren't written by me that I highly recommend. They give you more of an insider's viewpoint of what happened in the city um, and so that's that's what we're going to talk about today. Phoenix City, Alabama. Uh, Phoenix City, Alabama. Yes, I keep wanting to say Arizona. <laughs> Phoenix City, Alabama. There you go. Okay, so back in the 40s um, and early 50s, Phoenix City was labeled by some of the major national newspapers as America's wickedest city. Now say that 10 times fast, America wicked. I can't say it once. America's wickedest city. There you go. I had to look it up. I'm like, is wickedest even a word? But it is, I guess it is a word. <laughs> According to Time Magazine, it was a word. So anyways, it was labeled America's wickedest city. Well, what does that mean? Well, Phoenix City, Alabama was right across uh, the river from Fort Benning. Now, Fort Benning had at its peak about 100,000 soldiers running through it during wartime. Now, before we get into that, they soldiers were the worst treated people to ever come into the clubs in Phoenix City. And we'll get into some of that, but uh, where did it start? Why did, how did this all start in Phoenix City? I'm gonna back up a little bit. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Phoenix City was extremely poverty stricken after the Civil War. At that time, it was known as Girard. It wasn't known as Phoenix City yet. That was changed, I believe in 1897, it was changed to Phoenix City. Now, Girard, had a reputation all the way back into the Civil War of being a lawless area. Um, and so it just kind of, it, the, the stigma stayed is basically. So anyways, it was known as a lawless area even, even before Civil War times. Um, but by 1897, they named it Phoenix City. Now, Phoenix City had been raided several times and would be raided several times because of their illegal uh, moonshine operations and their legal liquor and things, um, but it still hadn't reached the pinnacle of the wickedest city, okay? Now, in the late 1940s, it had gotten to the point where they were before that, it got to the point where they were so poor, the city was going to go bankrupt, okay? And the city officials had a choice. They could either raise taxes or they could find another way or they were gonna lose all of their bonded debt. So the city was literally on the verge of bankruptcy. So the city leaders, knowing the people could not possibly pay any more taxes, um, they literally decided to let in illegal gambling. Now, it didn't seem like that big of a deal. They were going to let in gambling institutions. Um, this was going to pay for their, their tax problem. This was going to help them financially. This was going to save the city, save the community. And then these people came in with this facade of charity. So you have these people with all of these illegal machines and these club owners and these things. They come in, but they don't come in, you know, uh, 
it's like the wolf in sheep's clothing. They don't come in dressed as a wolf. They come in as a sheep. They come in as charitable uh, people. And so they come in with their money. They come in with their illegal machines and, and their, their clubs. They, put, they establish themselves in the community. And then they buy goodwill. They buy goodwill by uh, supporting the local churches projects. They, they buy goodwill by donating to the food pantries, by paying for the little, little league sponsorships, by doing this. They literally integrate themselves into every facet of Phoenix City society, um, even in the churches. So you have, you have some of the biggest underworld organized crime figures of the area are actually deacons in the local church or they are uh you know they are the person that runs the little league team or they are the person that that just donated the new uh classroom uh supplies you know for their local schools you know so so they literally bought their way in with charity so they they purchased uh goodwill amongst the citizens they didn't come in, you know, guns a blazing, big gangsters going to shoot up the town. That's not the way they came in. They came in very slyly. They very came in under the radar with charity and gifts and let us help you. You know, we're going to bring you out of poverty. We're going to save your city. This is, you know, it all came in under this guise of goodwill. Well, rather quickly, they started buying off officials. They started buying off law enforcement. They bought their way into different government um, positions. They, they got their, they paid for their people to be in, um, in, in different positions of power for judges and, and um, law enforcement. And I mean, the mayor of the city, everything they either were in the position themselves or they had bought the person in position to where you were to the point literally that there was no law in the city left absolutely none so you literally could go in downtown street um on on uh, in phoenix city you could go down main main street you could shoot somebody in the face there could be a hundred people watch you you could walk over to the police station. You could say, hey, I just shot this guy. It was self-defense. There's a hundred people that watched and they would let you get away with it. It wouldn't matter whether it was self-defense or not. There were so many murders in that town that were undocumented because there was nothing anybody could do about it. So if you had someone that tried to raise a fuss, they would be beaten um killed thrown into the river um they they literally for years after the place was cleaned up they were finding stolen property and things in in swamps and rivers and, and river banks and all this stuff that had just been tossed which would have been evidence if there had ever been a court case you know type of thing but you got to the point where you had a what they labeled as the s m syndicate this is the first label i have found in phoenix city it was jimmy matthews and hoyt shepherd they were running the gambling institutions now if you look down main street of phoenix city you would have club 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 then you would have a loan shark and then club 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 loan shark and so you would have you, you would you literally just stumble from one door to the next if you needed money they'd give you money and then they would uh, take your money in the next place and so this is the way phoenix city ran and at we're talking 1940s early 1950s the best estimate they can can find nowadays is that this this town was bringing in over a hundred million dollars worth of illegal gambling money okay this was a lot a lot of money that would be in the billion range uh when you're talking about today's money this is because we're talking 1940 so a hundred million dollars so they went from being so poverty stricken they the community was bankrupt to the point that they were they were uh having a hundred million dollars worth of illegal uh, revenue running through their city so of course then they got the pretty banks they got the pretty establishments they got the community centers they got the you know everything that the community would love to have they got it and everything seemed fine 
but it, it wasn't. And, and this is where uh, that just kind of gives you a launching off point to know uh, how it started. Okay. Now, by the early 1950s, um, by the early 1950s, this had gotten so out of control that Hoyt Shepard was the supposedly the big Dixie Mafia kingpin. Okay. Um, he was literally running his business out of the sheriff's office. So he wasn't the sheriff, but he was right in arm in arm with the sheriff. He would literally, you'd go in to report a crime and you would be actually sitting there talking. The person sitting at the desk wasn't even the sheriff. The sheriff would be over here talking to you. And the person sitting at the desk with his feet on the desk was actually the, the Dixie Mafia head. So it literally did you no good. So it, people learned real quickly that you can't report anything. It doesn't do you any good. Okay, so so this is this is the way it goes. Now, there's a lot of tales about people who would get ripped off in their gambling institutions. Now. Gambling itself, I'm not a gambler. I'm not, I, I don't necessarily approve of throwing your money out like that. I, I would say you could spend it better. But anyways, these gambling machines maybe wouldn't have been so bad if it wasn't so crooked. But they would literally not let you leave the building with any money left. They would literally target you until you had no money left on your person, until you've loaned yourself to the max and beyond at their, at their loan sharks. And then when they couldn't get a dime out of you, they would kick you out on the street, okay? And if you fussed and went to the police, then you were really in for it. So you came in, you, you were taken advantage of, you, you, your life has been ruined financially, whatever, maybe you've been beaten half to death, whatever the reason is, you find yourself at the local sheriff's station in, P in Phoenix City. And you are telling the sheriff all about these woes. You know, you might be bleeding at the time saying, this is what happened to me. Are you going to arrest this person? Now, this is the, this is the trick that they would do they would say, sure, come in. They wouldn't run you off. They would say, sure, come in. Let's take your statement. Come back here, follow me. They would take them to a back room. Then they'd say, we'll be right back. You relax. We'll get your statement in a minute. We're sorry this happened to you. They would walk out, lock the door behind them. You would be in jail till next Monday morning when you could see the judge and you would be charged with public drunkenness. And this is what happened over and over and over again. Now, if you tried to fight that anymore beyond that point, you would get beaten and most likely tossed in the river. So this is how Phoenix City was running by 1954. Now, um, there were some people who realized what was going on. And I seen a letter, um, I don't have it right here on my desk at the moment. I will make another video about that. There was actually a letter in, um, in some archives that literally said this. This was Major Cullen O'Connor to General Haggerty. General Haggerty, um, um, let's see. Colin O'Connor, so Major O'Connor was actually at Fort Benning, okay, and he was writing an official letter, it's got the letterhead and everything on it, to General Haggerty, talking about the trouble in Phoenix City, okay. This is a quote, I quote it directly, it's on the back of my book. The most deadly enemy you will face in the entirety of your career is the Dixie Mafia based out of Phoenix City, Alabama. Now, let that sink in for a minute. You're talking about a war general talking to another war general about how bad it is here on our home turf in Alabama. That's how bad Phoenix City had gotten by this time. Now, there was a few people that had tried to band together, a few community people tried to band together and they created the Russell Betterman Association. They tried to create this little group where they would investigate things and then they would try to take it to some kind of law enforcement 
outside of Phoenix City, but they're always shut down saying that's a local problem, that's a local problem, we've got to take it back. Well, they couldn't take it back. And so they kept fighting, they kept get, kept trying to support different candidates, trying to, you know, vote in better people, trying to do everything they could to get this, this group of Dixie Mafia thugs out of their community. Well, one of the guys leading the charge was Hugh Bentley. Now, Hugh Bentley, um, and Albert Patterson are two of the big names that helped run the Russell Betterman Association. Now, Hugh Bentley was out of town and his wife and his children were at home. Early hours of the morning, um, an explosion rocks their house. Their house is literally firebombed. And their, his son, his teenage son's whole bed ends up out in the front yard. Somehow they survive. And you can look on, on YouTube, um, I'll put a link in the comments um, in the description of this video so you can actually watch that. His wife actually talks about kind of waking up, coming to, staring up at the sky, trying to figure out what happened, where she is, what's going on. And she yells for her son and her son answers her from the front yard his his whole bed is out in the front yard and he's shaking trying so it's just a miracle that these people survived this of course hugh bentley kept pushing on and eventually it's going to lead to a very public hideous assassination of an innocent person um and that's what i'm going to talk about in the next video um the public assassination of albert patterson so i, I hope you've enjoyed this video make sure and check out the dawn of the dixie mafia on amazon that's mine um and then the next one i want you to check out it's also on amazon it's in uh Margaret Ann Barnes. It's called The Tragedy and Triumph of Phoenix City, Alabama. Again, I will put links to these books in, um, in the description so you guys can find them easily. Uh, yes, uh, some, of the, some of the links will be affiliate links. Um, I am an affiliate with Amazon uh, that just goes to support the channel a little bit. So uh, I will see you in the next video and we're going to talk about the tragic assassination of Albert Patterson. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.